Big showdown here between San Miguel Beer and the Pure Foods Hot Dogs. Starting units on your screen. Samboy Lim will be starting off for the beer men this evening. First possession goes to Pure Foods. Dean Tupamaran is inside. Samboy Lim contests possession. Picked up by Jerry Cadenera. Alden Patrimonio is underneath. And rebound to Franz Kumaran. And you know, right away, you can see that each team is trying to find its strength in the early going. Great exchange there between uh, Big Nabise and uh, Alvin yeah. Deng. Now, as we said, Glenn Capasha could be a pivotal player in this particular ball game. He's matched up against Art de la Cruz, who's bigger. But then, you know, the experience of Capasha and his ability to create shots, uh -huh. not just for himself, but for the other teams, will play an important role for the Pure Foods Hot Dogs. Glenn Capasha... Uh, would help Dindo Pumarin a great deal. But Glenn Capasha certainly is one of those players that you could consider dangerous because he does so many moves. Oh, yes. And he can do a lot of things on the hard court. Ives with a turnaround jumper over Patrimonio. Jerry Cotillera has the rebound. Here's Glenn Capasha. Boy Kabahu up against Samboy Lim. Vigadise gets the ball out of his hands. And he best gets it off to Franz Kumar and good bounce to Alvin Tech. He gets away. Oh, oh boy. Give me that shot. An embarrassing moment there for Alvin Tang. He had the layup. Actually, he could have used his, his left hand mm -hmm. and used it off the glass. Got a wrong spin on, the, on that basketball. Tapasha with a miss. Franz Kumar with a lead pass to Arcella Cruz, but he is traveling. No basket there. Well, he just took one step too many. He had his eye on the iron before. He realized how close he was, or rather how far he was from the basket. There you can see. Uh, he did uh, expect the pass, but he had his back turned. Uh, caught the ball in time, but did not have the rhythm. Well, that just goes to show how badly each team wants this particular yes. ball game. And when these two deeply experienced teams may have those kinds of jitters in the early going, you're in for a great game. We certainly expect that. There's Jerry Cordillera giving Pure Foods a two-point lead early on. Now Jerry is going to be very important to the Pure Foods cause tonight, especially since he is uh, an unusual matchup for either Alvin Tang or Mon Fernandez. He's mm -hmm. stronger than Fernandez, but a bit quicker than Tang. So uh, he, he's really got to be less laid back. All that time, Yvette Gadita is showing everyone that he does not intend to play a laid-back game tonight. Franz Pumarin gives it to Samboy Lim. Pull-up job for a three-pointer. Glenn Capasha with a rebound. We are tied at four-all. Three of the last, uh, the first four attempts of Pure Foods have come from the outside, so that just goes to show that they're trying to explore that facet of their game, and as we said, they're going to need to get that shot to open up the inside. Triple V by Dean Do Pumaren. As he said, they are starting to open up the inside. Just testing the water, so to speak, but getting a bonus that time with that shot drilled in by Dean Do. Pure Foods up by three. Ives spots Art de la Cruz inside, trying to use the mismatch against Dean de Pumarin, but couldn't get it to drop. Precisely. A bit of intimidation there provided also by Jerry Cordillera. yes. Cabajo with a miss. Dignadisa with a rebound to France Pumarin. Pumarin pulls up. Yes! Triple V! France Pumarin! Tell him it's catching. <laughs> the Pumarin brothers have just scored a Rainbow shot, a rainbow shot apiece. There's Coach Ding Panganiban of the TJ Hot Dogs. So he's done a great job of uh, unleashing the players' talent. Uh -huh. The problem now will be the kind of tempo that this ball game assumes. Samboy Lim with a, a miscue in what is usually his favorite play. Dean though missing that one, and Arta La Cruz taps it to Samboy Lim. Alvin Patrimonio asking for a loose ball foul, not getting it. Alvin Tang. Well, in that last sequence, the big men of San Miguel Bay were slow to get back on defense, and that's something they cannot afford Boy against a Cabal. very dangerous juggernaut like the Pure Foods Hot Dogs. Meantime, Boy Cabajo gives up this foul. A nudge out there against Sam Boy Lim. We're tied at seven, Ed. Yes, this is our third deadlock in the game. Sam Boy Lim with a fall away. 
And you see Glenn Capasha has picked up a couple of rebounds early, mm -hmm. and he's helped uh, take some of the pressure off. As you see, a great block there from Alvin Tang and Alvin Patrimonio. Could have been a great shot, but Alvin Tang foiled it. Jerry Cordillera coming out of the fray of that turnover. Glenn Capasha ties a three-point shot. He gets it. Capasha, three points! This early, Pure Foods, which was not really taking a lot of three-point shots the past couple of seasons, already has two out of three from three-point territory. The other one, of course, coming from Dean DePomada early on. Ives, the Samboy Lim with the offensive rebound. A handoff, De La Cruz pops. Yes. One-point lead for the TJ Hot Dogs. I'm sure Dean Panganiban is happy with the way his team is shooting, but They've got to be careful not to be lured into a very fast game this early uh -huh. on. Uh, Dito Pumara is setting it up for the TJ Hot Dogs. Jerry Cordillera coming out and drilling it in from inside the key. That's an important shot for Jerry Cordillera, especially when he's got to play the low post against a double teaming uh, San Miguel beer squad. And you see Mon Fernandez is going to come in relatively early. Yes, Norman Black feels it's time. Tom Boylan asking for a clear out. Ardena Cruz coming in. Three seconds on the shot clock. Alvin Tank puts it up. Gets it back. Up against Jerry Codinera. And referee Benji Chua is going to call a foul on Jerry. He's working this game together with Ernie De Leon and June Cordero. Here you're going to see Alvin Tank just really you know, putting his nose to the grindstone, mm -hmm. as it were. And making sure he get the contact. Alvin Tang with his third point in the game. He's played uh, an impressive old Filipino. Yes, Alvin Tang. He runs up the floor a bit uh, more quickly. He's even more aggressive now than he used to be. But we see him huffing and puffing a bit, and that's probably why Norman Black has sent in Mon Fernandez. Patrimonio with a lefty. Well, that time, Ives Dignadis had tried to reach around and half front Patrimonio, and Patrimonio got the baseline, and, you know, once he's that close to the basket, great block on Jerry, by Jerry Codinero and Alvin Tang. Franz Pumaren taking a pass and then going for the hoop. And if TJ Hot Dogs lead is down to two, here's Boy Kamahu. Good fake off Samboy Lim. And we have a timeout by Norman Black. Timeout, San Miguel Beer. Rather, between San Miguel Beer, Pure Foods, Fernandez is in. There he is. And you know, one thing about Fernandez is he plays quite well against uh, the Pure Foods Hot Dogs. The problem is that that uh, the Pure Foods Hot Dogs team as a whole rebounds quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fernandez, well, he has problems against the bigger players of Pure Foods. At that time, Jerry Cordillera tried to take the ball out of the hands of Mon Fernandez, who had already gotten the rebound. That was just a tap out. Town stands at 16-12 in favor of the TJ Hot Dogs. Uh, looks like a foul will be called on Glenn Capasha for his sticking too close. Cruz. He had a hand on his hip, mm -hmm. and I think that's not the way to dance the tango. <laughs> Tell me about it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, how do you dance the tango? <laughs> that's why I was asking to tell me about it. You seem to be the authority. <laughs> well, I think I've done enough dirty dancing already. <laughs> Glenn Capasho down low to Jerry Codinera moving against Mon Fernandez. Tries to do a Mon Fernandez yes. boot. Got a small boot there from San Miguel Deer fans. Now, the tempo is beginning to settle into a, the kind that both teams like, but thus far, Pure Foods has not really been able to make the shots. They've been getting the opportunities, but I think they have to concentrate more on finishing the play. Now, especially when you have a big game, you know, you want to score the points right away, and you're not really concentrating on uh, the shots the way you normally do. This time, Alvin Patrimonio looked more deliberate, but 
He was held back by defense because he said no basket there. And TJ Hot Dog still hanging on to a two point lead. And Coach Ding Panganiban sends in his first replacement of the game, Joey Guanyo for Boy Kamahu. Another outside shooter for the Pure Foods Hot Dog. So you can see Ding Panganiban's philosophy is clear tonight, and he's been successful thus far. Jerry Codiniera moving against Fernandez again. That time using his power against Juan Fernandez. That's what we were talking about. The double team did not appear, so Codiniera had an easy dribble all the way to the hoop. And it's back to a four-point lead for Pure Foods. Samboy Lim has not really gotten going yet. Well, that's fast that's there. Fast. Dignadice was on the wrong foot, and uh, we have a timeout by Pure Foods. Timeout, Pure Foods, standard juicy hot dogs. Albert Patrimonio with eyes only for the hoop that time. And the Sinsamboy Lim uh, seems to have uh, not yet gotten his basketball legs back. Ato Agustin has been sent in his stead. Norman Black gave uh, Samboy time to do his thing, but uh -huh. you know, in the game, Sam you can't really wait that long. Samboy had nine minutes on the floor. And so why waste time? He brought in another great scorer, Ato Agustin. And he got to work right away. Ato, however, will try to get his first two points from the free throw line. Now oh, there's uh, the guys we were talking about, Chino Trinidad on your left, and of course, Butch Maniego helping him out. Chino, the uh, very young trooper, is down with the fever, but not out. Doing his thing on the radio coverage over DZAM 1026, NBC, the Basketball Network. Well, he's had his work cut out for him tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. Had a like overtime for oh. first game. <laughs> By the way, if you just tuned in, Shell won, as uh, Bill said, in overtime over Alaska, 98-93. to That was another spectacular ball game. Yes. She said started off as a whole hum affair, but then... Uh, what do we have here? A foul by Ives Dignadice. Yes, he's been trying to foul, cheat on defense against Patrimonio. Mm -hmm. Now here he, he let Alvin get good positioning under the basket and tries and to make up for it by reaching around. Glenn Capasha is inside, kicks it back out to Joey Guanyo. Capasha is now on the other side and De La Cruz stays with him. Alvin Patrimonio looks at the shot clock. They've got all 12 seconds to work with, and the ball is knocked away. We're going to have Jeffrey Graves checking in for the first time for Yves Dignadice. Well, in that last play, there wasn't much movement on the part of Pierfoods. That's why they really weren't able to get a good uh, shot. And here's Joey Guanyo got a good shot, but as I said, you've got to concentrate on finishing the play. That time, Jeffrey Graves showed why he is a very important facet in the San Miguel Beer game. Just grabbed the rebound away. Guanyo getting one. Now the tempo is beginning to kick up again, Ed. Yes. Guanyo on the run. Now it's in that type of ball game that all the great individual talent of Pure Foods really come out. And you see both these teams averaging a lot of points on the fast break. And that transition defense that both teams are going to have to work on tonight. Juan Fernandez trying to weave some magic inside. Tries to get it back. He saves it at the sideline. Gets it out to Franz Pumarin. Ato Agustin is open for a long jumper. Good step on the white line. And uh, preparing to come in is the director, Hector Kama, who will come in during the next ball, dead ball situation for Franz Pumarin. And you see, Dindu Pumarin senses what's happening. Uh -huh. So he's trying to keep his team from getting caught into a running game. As all experienced players know, mahaba pa yan eh. Masabihin niya sa mga teammates niya. At saka, isa pa eh. Lamang sa tao ng konti yung San Miguel. Pumarin! Uh -huh. yeah. In the meantime, Alvin Patrimonio is caught for traveling inside. And here comes Hector Calma. We'll see what happened here in our San Miguel beer is slow -mo. Alvin Patrimonio trying to create some space for himself inside against the phalanx of 
white shirts. And you see the whole defense of San Miguel there collapsing around him once he right. got the basketball. Juan Fernandez moving against Jerry Codillera. Jeffrey Graves almost got that ball into the hoop. Down to 17 seconds in the first period. And clearly, Dean Pangaliban has issued orders to whoever is playing small forward to help with the rebound. You uh -huh. see, Glenn Capasha earlier was playing small forward. He got a couple of rebounds. Joey Guanyo got a couple of rebounds. Because you see the disparity between the rebounding of Alvin Patrimonio and Jerry Codinera and the rest of the squad is quite big. Codinera is averaging 12.3. Patrimonio is averaging 10 rebounds a game, but nobody else is averaging even 5. Ramon Fernandez missing what looked like an easy shot. And we have Pierfoods enjoying a two-point lead at the end of the first. Start of the second quarter, Elmer Reyes is in the ball game for the first time for the TJ Hot Dog. Sector Calma slips, and Dean Tapumares takes the ball away. Oh. Up against B-Boy Ravanes. And a foul is going to be called on B-Boy. You know, this is the stage of a ball game wherein uh, teams want to usually make a run because usually you try to start and finish with your strongest five whenever you play a particular half so now would be the best time for pure foods to try to expand its lead especially uh, if they can give patrimon uh, so they can give patrimonio or codinero or pumar in a couple of minutes rest mm -hmm. towards the end of this first half right now they have remained on the hard court for the TJ Hot Dogs. Dean Dupumaran gives them a four-point lead at 22 to 18, but this has been the biggest lead so far, just four points. An indication of things to come. Yes. Hector Calma. Good pick there by Fernandez. He gets the ball back. And good positioning by Biba Rabat. Just a two-point lead again for the TJ Hot Dogs. Elmer Reyes coming out against Agustin. Patrimonio has Graves in front of him. It's probably going to be a foul on Hector Calma. Accidentally undercut Al who went up for the shot. But you can see one-on-one, -on -one, Patrimonio is going to have a field day against the uh, more of the against more of the defenders of San Miguel Beer. That's why it's important for San Miguel to double team him. But in this case, Patrimonio cut over from the weak side, then just simply went around Graves and into the paint. And that left Kama trying to stop Alvin Patrimonio on that move. Patrimonio, however, gets his two gift shots to give the TJ Hot Dogs another four-point lead. One thing about the first quarter, Ed, is Pure Foods did not get... Oh. I think I'm not going to say anything for a while. Uh, Juan Fernandez certainly did his job finishing off that statement of yours. Oh, yes. <laughs> In mid-sentence. With emphasis. Yes. What do we have here? Guanyu. Looks like a three-second violation on Jerry uh -huh. Codinera. Might have had a foot in the paint. Field goal percentage. Actually, both teams had exactly the same number of attempts, but Pure Foods really shot better, especially from the outside in the first few minutes of the ball game, and that's why they have the slim lead. Juan Fernandez heading it off to Hector Cava from within his range. San Miguel is very effective when Fernandez is the hub of their half-court set. You know, Fernandez, of course, you can't back off against him because he has an outside shot he can... Uh, take you strong to the hoop and then the guys just simply cut around him in a pattern set by uh, Norman Black and it's up to the other team to keep guessing where the ball is going to wind up and uh, Fernandez will keep you guessing all night oh yes meantime we have Jerry Codinera earning some rest on the bench with the entry of Albert Kevin Ramos one of their power acquisitions this year Juan Fernandez kind of forced that one Ramas gets it off to Dean Dupumaren. Forward pass to Elmer Reyes. He likes this. Oh, yes, he does indeed. One of the premier fast break finishers. If for that alone, 
he has earned a great reputation. And here comes Boy Cabajo giving it to El Reyes. Good handoff, but Vito Pumara did not expect the pass. However, it will stay with the TJ Hot Dogs. Well, there the Pure Foods Hot Dogs were trying to be a bit too unselfish. You know, mm -hmm. there's such a thing in basketball, especially with a talent-laden team like Pure Foods. Fight for the rebound, won by Mon Fernandez. Ato Agustin now stepping on the gas pedal. Two shots for Agustin of the foul by Elmer Reyes, his first. Well, Elmer Reyes uh, let Agustin get past him, and it was up to Patrimonio try to be to try to be at the last line of defense. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an important substitution coming up after these free throws of Ato Agustin for Pure Foods. Coming in for Dean de Bumara, is that what you were talking about? Oh yes, exactly. You know, um, Juntan coming into the ball game really changes the the way Pure Foods executes. He's uh, not as good a fast break uh, point guard as Dean de Bumara is, although he is a bigger and stronger defensive guard. But uh, in a game like this, especially since we are tied and uh, some of the starters some of San Miguel Beer have sat down, it would be important for Pure Foods to get a good run. Well, in the meantime, Juntan called off the bench, uh, lapses into this error after the double team was clamped down on him, a backing violation. And we are deadlocked at 26. That's something a lot of the teams in the PBA do. Whenever you come into the ballgame, make sure uh, make sure that you know what's going to happen. Or make yeah. sure you're alert to uh, the matchups and all that because the other team is going to go at you. But look at this guy, Ato Agustin. Talking about going at you. Yes. He just keeps on rolling along. Exactly. Boy Cabajo. And now the inside game of uh, Pure Foods is being tested by San Miguel Beer. In the first quarter, the outside shooting of Pure Foods carried them. But now, especially with, uh, with Codiniera sitting down and uh, Jun Tan playing the point, it's going to be a test to see how well Pure Foods can play San Miguel inside at both ends of the floor. Mm -hmm. Foul Reyes. Elmer Reyes in the meantime picks up foul number two. That is also the second team foul of the TJ Hot Dogs matching the team fouls committed by San Miguel so far. Well, I was going to make that point again, but Fernandez has the ball. Yes. So. <laughs> point made. <laughs> well, actually, the point I've been trying to make every time he gets the ball is that uh, neither team has really gotten a lot of free throws in this ball game. And San Miguel Beer has had the advantage in that department. Here, they, thus far, they have a slight advantage, but that just goes to show that Pure Foods should be taking it stronger to the basket against them. At well, that time, Bibo Romanes tried to take it strong, but missed the shot. Boy Cabajo pulls up. Smart thing to do, you don't have the shot. Well, Fernandez there tapped the ball out of the hands of Ramas. Hector Kama is inside on the run, he gets it. That's what's known as the Elgin Baylor principle. <laughs> you have a 10-foot shot, go in for an 8-footer. Mm -hmm. Elgin Baylor, of course, if uh, you weren't around that time, one of the greats in the NBA. Well, actually, I meant Julius Irving. Oh, <laughs> <on>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, Mon Fernandez uh, had a hand in that particular scramble. Two seconds, shot clock. Only two seconds left for Pure Foods to shoot. Let's see what kind of play they have for the situation. Jun Tan snaps one off, and the buzzer goes off. The count is down to 32-28, a four-point lead for San Miguel Beer, with seven minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Agustin misses, Viva Ravanes. On the second try. Well, you see, in that play, Pure Foods gave up. They saw that Agustin had the shot, and they still didn't try to join the play. In uh, close games like this, especially with San Miguel Beer having taken the lead with a six to nothing run, you know, that is going to hurt you later on. And Agustin zigzagging his way to the front. Jeffrey so Graves got both June Tan and Boy Cabajo jumping, and the foul will be called. 
Cabajo. Boy, Cabajo gets second personal in the Cabajo. game. See Jeffrey Graves with a fake here. And Cabajo. we have a timeout by the DJ Hot Dog. Cabajo. 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 Jeffrey Graves missing the first of his two free throws off that second personal foul by Boy Cabajo. So San Miguel still has a six point lead at 34 28. You know, this quarter, San Miguel Beer has gotten 13 attempts at the basket already, and Pure Foods has only gotten six thus far, and that's one reason why. Another is that Pure Foods already has five turnovers in the period. San Miguel has just one. Pure Foods has to be more careful in uh, handling the basketball, and they have to box out more, especially off their defensive glass. Well, Bibo Ravares and Jeffrey Graves, as well as Juan Fernandez, certainly have been getting their share of the offensive rebounds. He's got it. Ramos has also got it. And it's down to a five point lead by San Miguel Pierre, 35, 36 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the second period. Hector Calma slices through. Ramos with the rebound. Tight pass by Dindo Pumara to Glenn Capasso. I see now Pure Foods is doing the smart thing. They're not rushing things. They're mm -hmm. taking their time, finding a good shot. Now the other team missed a layup, but that doesn't mean you have to rush up and try to get one yourself. That time, Boy Cabal picking up the loose ball. And that's that. Take, they had to take the shot. There were only three seconds on their shot yes. clock. Did the Pumara realize that they have a fresh 25 second shot clock and sets up the play. Capacho is going to be called for the offensive foul, offensive foul. as Capacho. he violated the airspace of uh, Ato Agustin. There you can see this is clear. He actually leans into uh -huh. Agustin and uses the outside hand to hit the glass. Pierfus has not hit any outside shots in this second quarter. And that is one reason why San Miguel Beer has been able to clamp down on them quite hard in this second period. Agustin drills in. Agustin. And the biggest lead of the ball game is up with an eight-pointer by the beer men. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's important to get a good run. And that's going to be a backing violation. Oh, the possession was not really contested. Into doubt. And Dino Kumara just chased it into his backcourt. Actually, you saw that he actually waited a yeah. while before trying to touch it. And the applause you heard can be interpreted uh, both ways for Samboy Lim and for Diboy Ravanes. He yes. did his own thing. And that stint on the hard court. A miss by Agustin. 4.52 to go in the second period. Eight point lead by San Miguel at 38.30. Ramos posting up against Jeffrey Graves. Turn around, Jeffrey won't go, and Graves has a rebound. Now, Ramos was able to take that shot, thinking that Codinier would be under the basket for the rebound. Oh. Great pass! Graves, and then surely going to make our top ten. Oh, yes, sir. We'll have that on our KP at the half. Top ten plays. And then an interview with Commissioner Ray Marquez, or, yes, Commissioner Ray Marquez, on the uh, meeting that the PBA board had last, or yesterday. And KP at the half will be emceed by the real Romy Quintana. <laughs> <laughs> Not the white extended version. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in our first game, I said Romy was going to do the KP at the half, and then Bill Velasco came on. Turnover okay. story. Romy doesn't feel insulted. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you feel the same way. I'll tell you later. <laughs> A foul on Capasho, that will be his third. And Franz Pumarin is going to check back in, but probably for Otto Augustin, so he'll have to wait for the next dead ball situation. Well, Pumarin is coming in for Hector Kalma. And we were just talking about uh, Commissioner Ray Marquez. There he is with June Bernardino and our boss man, uh, Mr. Ricky Vela's president of Vintage Enterprises. As always. San Miguel Beer and uh, 
Nani de Mejilla is going to try to shore up the front line of uh, Pure Foods. You see, they're not really getting any offensive rebounds, so if they miss shots and they're being forced into some bad shots by San Miguel Beer, and that's something that they have to address right away because this lead is going to get out of hand pretty soon. Well, boy, Cabal certainly had to struggle for those two points inside. Grant Pumaran out to Fernandez, and Fernandez realized it was, a, it was a bad pass as soon as the ball left his hand. He wished there was a string <laughs> attached to the ball to filter that. Boy, Cabajo with back-to-back -back hits, cuts the lead down to six. Three minutes and two seconds to go in the second period. Neither team has gotten into penalty in either of the first quarters. That will actually do well for Pure Foods, especially now the Patrimonio has gotten an extended rest in this first half of play. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really in foul trouble. Jerry Cadena has an easy two points. Nice and easy does it for Jerry Cadena as he got the lead pass at an 8-2 to two run here by T.J. Hot Dogs has cut a 10-point lead by San Miguel to just four now at 42-38. Agustin wants to get it back, but that plan backfired. Well, you can see that that was not uh, in sync with the offense of San Miguel. Because, uh, the beer men were caught looking, and Norman Black wants to talk about that with his time. Two minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the second quarter, and TJ Hot Dogs catching up on the San Miguel Beer squad. The Beerman erected a 10-point lead earlier in this period, now cut down to four. A slip by Samboy Lim and Cabajo almost got away, but Alvin Teng and Nato Agustin were there. You know, in this uh, first half of play, the small men of uh, Pure Foods have really done their share. Wow, Even though their mission is trying to hit some shots from the outside, uh, Boy Cabajo, uh, Dindu Pomaren, and Glenn Capasio have really done a good job of stirring things up and making it difficult for San Miguel Beer to adjust on defense. On the other hand, Sam Boy Lim has been struggling in this ball game Pasho. from both ends of the court. Yes. He slipped twice, missed uh, all of his attempts, I believe. He has not scored in this ball game. He's only taken three attempts and missed all of them. No count on that shot as Alvin Tang was caught for his first personal foul. Both teams sport five team fouls so far with 207 remaining in the quarter. As we were talking about, each team wants to finish strong. And you see now uh, Patrimonio, Codiniera, and Pumaren are on the floor at the same mm -hmm. time for Pure Foods. And that's what we were talking about at the start of this period. They were able to get back into the game even without Patrimonio and they're hoping for another run now that Alvin's back in the dying uh, minute and a half or so of this ball game. To try and rest the lead. Yes. Boy Cabal certainly has been trying but that time the ball wouldn't drop. Art de la Cruz ahead of the pack and he gets a top 24 fast break. A difficult one over and yeah. a fully extended Manny de Mejillo. By the way Manny de Mejillo is in our top 10 and you'll see later. Okay we'll watch out for that on KP at the half. 44-38, back to a six-pointer by San Miguel Beer. Tight pass to Jerry Codinera from Dean to Pumarin, but on the money. Now that's exactly what Pumarin does for Pure Foods. He's able to spot the open man, and uh, you know you don't really have to wait for the ball to come to you. When Pumarin's the point guard, he really sees the floor very well. quarter 46 40 is the count less than a minute remaining in the second quarter boy Cabajo has been working extra hard inside especially when the uh, double team comes you know Pierfus has only hit one out of um, eight shots from the outside in this uh, second quarter play and that's why Cabajo is trying to take it strong inside and I need to get the follow-up Just a four-point lead for San Miguel Beer. Time down to 39 seconds here in the second period. Franz Pumaren getting around a pick by Alvin Tang. 
Now that was a difficult shot. Dindo Pumara gave him all he could handle and he still made the difficult long fall away. A back-to-back -back hits there by Franz Pumaren. There's a four-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Ives Dignadise caught reaching in for his third personal foul in the game. There again you see Patrimonio was uh, able to get Dignadise. away from Dignadise and Dignadise has given three fouls and not the type of fouls you'd like to give up. Yes. Now these are fouls even before a shot is taken. Mm -hmm. And you catch Dignadise trying to check his move mm -hmm. the split second after he commits the foul knowing that he shouldn't have done that. Alvin Patrimonia has canned in all his four tries from the 4.5 meter line. Fernandez. Four seconds to go in the second quarter. Juan Fernandez forced to put it up and score it. A six point lead for San Miguel Beer going into the halftime. Brad Dogs coach Ding Panganiban uh, activating uh, one of the new players or one of the fresher legs the TJ Hot Dogs lineup, Joey Santa Maria, seeing action for the first time this evening for the Hot Dogs. Meanwhile, Norman Black is uh, going back to this uh, unit which he feels best matches up against the Pure Foods team on the floor right now. This was the starting unit yes. that he had in this ball game. Samboy Lim trying to get into the scorer's circle. Still can't buy a basket. Art de la Cruz held down by Alvin Patrimonio. And in that sequence, uh, de la Cruz and Joey Santa Maria was just uh, left gaping at uh, what would happen. You know, a lot of people actually underrate uh, Boy Cabal as a defensive player, but he doesn't really uh, bite into fakes that easily. And he's got very good lateral movement, so that helps a lot, especially against people who like Sam Boy Lim who like driving to the basket. And his looks can be deceptive. He is a pretty strong guy as you mm -hmm. probably saw in the first half. He had some very difficult situations inside the paint uh, in which he was able to come out of it scoring even. And they understand that uh, before this season he did a lot of uh, weight training with the legs. Uh -huh. So that's why he gets a lot more lift now on his shots and he's able to do more running and he's able to fight through picks more on defense. Alvin Teng trying to take the ball away from Jerry Cordillera gets his second personal foul. Well, Teng has not really had a good offensive game. He's only mm -hmm. got three points and he's been really tied up trying to contain Jerry Cordillera. As we said, Cordillera is an unusual matchup for San Miguel Beer. Great half from Samboy Lim. The run, the run, Samboy. The boot, the pep, 24, a fast break with a foul from Boy Kabahu. I think Kabahu. we just saw one of those at halftime. <laughs> oh, yes. There it is on our San Miguel Beer slow-mo. And a three-point play coming up for the Sky Walker. <laughs> and that is the first three points of Samboy Lim in this ball game. And it comes at a great time. It gives a 14-point advantage to San Miguel Beer. Beautiful. Has not scored. Has not scored in this uh, third quarter. Well, actually, there was something wrong with the electronic scoreboard. The uh, count is 55-44. Again, Pure Food's trying to play the way it started out by shooting from the outside. Boy, Kamal is doing the honors there with a the triple V. Yes, it's ninth point in the game. Samboy tries it from left quarter court and misses. And he bounces it off Boy Kabahu. And actually the top play in our top ten was that very type of move that he had. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was talking about uh, 
the fatigue factor at the start of this coverage. That was most noticeable when these two teams played for the first time in this all Filipino. Patrimonio only got about three or four minutes rest in the entire ball game, and he was just visibly, he and Dindu Pumarin in particular, were just so worn out at the end of that game. Meantime, Boy Cabajo picks up his fourth personal foul of Samboy Lim. And he's going to be replaced now by Joey Guano. He best to get easy with his eye on the hoop. Got the bounce. Gadise now has six points in the ball game. A basket in each period. And it's a ten-point lead by San Miguel. Boy Cabajo drives the draw. Results in a foul. The foul on Samboy Dim. Here comes Joey Guano for Boy Cabajo, who's now saddled with four personals. And now each team is trying to uh, uh, measure the strength of the inside defense of the other. The first half, neither team really did that, which is why there weren't that many free throws given. So now, it's time to go to work on the inside because you can't mm -hmm. live or die by your outside shot as Beerfoods tried to do in the first half. As you said, that has cost uh, several fouls already with only two minutes gone by. Beerfoods has picked up four team fouls while San Miguel has had three. Exactly. Alvin Tang leaves the ball behind, but he picks it up. He says out got a four. Six. Four on the shot clock, and somebody Lim takes it inside. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, this is bound to happen. Samboy Lim about to explode any time. He's been biding his time inside, trying time and again. And finally, he has gotten going. Another three-point play coming up for him. Did not score at all in the first two quarters of this ball game. Meantime, Alden Patrimonio is pulled out. And we have Nani De Mejilio in his stead. It's a very unorthodox front line for Pure Foods. But uh, make no mistake about it, that's a pretty quick front line for uh, mm -hmm. Pure Foods. Nani De Mejilio is a pretty good trailer on the fast break. And he's actually a very decent medium range jump shooter. Yes. Just a matter of getting his confidence back since he was traded to Pure Food. Here's De Mejilio. Joey Guanyu with an offensive rebound and a reverse. A lot of blue shirts inside. Exactly. De Mejilio with a hand off the jersey, but he had a double. And more offensive rebounding by the TJ Hot Dog. And that is exactly what was missing in the second quarter, Ed. Yes. And with this huge lineup plus the instruction to the other uh, players on the squad to gang rebound. You see, they got four offensive rebounds in one play. And Joey Guano is up for a three-point play. Norman Black realizes Dignadice. the situation, sends in Mon Fernandez for Ives Dignadice. And so now Fernandez and Teng are on the floor at the same time. Dignadice is not really been able to get his offense going. He's been out of sync on defense as well. And he was matched up against Patrimonio. So with Patrimonio not there, there's really no sense in wasting his uh, defensive capabilities. Franz Pumar and quarter backing for the Beerman. Juan Fernandez posting up against Jerry Codinera. The handoff to Pumarin. He skirts the lane. The elegant shot won't go. Offensive rebound, Alvin Tang, and an offensive foul. And that's another thing that the big lineup of Pure Foods adds is intimidation. Teng. Alvin Teng knew Jerry Codinier was behind him, but then he saw Nani De Mejilio in mm -hmm. front of him, so he tried to change his shot and ward off. Still, San Miguel hangs on to a 10-point advantage at 59-49. Freedom range shot by Jerry won't go. Offensive rebound to Mejilio. And we were talking about the confidence in this man. He's gotten it back and missed the outside shot. Now he's been very active on the inside. And this lineup without Patrimonio has really boosted the pure food. Now they're only down by eight. Brad Pumana snaps from top of the key. Sort of a role reversal here for both teams. Now 
Pass on Miguel Deer trying to hit from the outside. That's true. But Joey Guardian says, I'll try it this time. Jericho Dinera is there anyway. San Miguel Deer has to make some adjustments off their defensive glass. They're giving too many second shots to Pure Foods. That's right. Dean Dopumaran gives up a foul off his brother. And we have Jun Tan coming in for Dindo. Seven fifty-one to go. We're in the third. In the first game, it was decided in overtime, 98-93, in favor of Shell Rebel X, and at the expense of Alaska Milk. That was the sixth overtime game this season. Illegal defense on the DJ Hot Dogs resets the shot clock to 25 seconds for San Miguel. Fernandez with an isolation decides to go out to Pumaran instead. Perhaps Pumaran actually hesitated and Nani Dimejillo with a crossover dribble. Joey Santa Maria has a chance of not playing together that much on the floor. Uh -huh. Fernandez is fouled by Jerry Guevara. That is his second personal in the game. Here you see Bureford's caught backpedaling on defense. The other two big fellas collided at the other mm -hmm. end of the floor, and they weren't able to recover in time. Here you see what happened. Dem Demihilio didn't give up the ball to a smaller player, and they paid for it. Well, Fernandez has only scored seven points so far, but he has done so many other things on the hard court. Actually, Fernandez, one of the leaders, actually the leader in assists for San Miguel Beer and one of the top rebounders as well. And the Vigilio certainly has regained a lot of confidence in his game these past few Matches that they've had Alvin Perry, the beneficiary of another Fernandez assist. Now both teams are beginning to hit their stride and Pierre has to clamp down on defense to keep San Miguel Beer from expanding this lead and to try to catch up. Someone with a pass to De La Cruz, Mon Fernandez is traveling. He was on the wrong foot on the side the sidestep, so he had to take an extra tiny step. Mm -hmm. There you see, yeah. he had to stutter a bit. And that's something that uh, Pat Riley taught the Los Angeles Lakers while he was coaching them. When you receive the ball, you don't have to establish your pivot foot right away. A lot of players, when they catch the ball, they have one foot in front of the other, so you know which direction they're headed. And well, here, beginning to go to town here. He's not giving up. He missed one from way out earlier, and the crowd was cheering him when he got the leather, but that did not daunt him a bit. Not at all. Franz Pumata gets momentarily open and he drills it in. Franz himself has had a good offensive game, 13 points so far. Halfway through the third period, Jericho Dinera up against Alvin Tang on his turn. Tang will be called for the foul. That is his Fun fourth. Thing. Actually, Tang gave him the room. Mm -hmm. Inside the paint, as you see here, and we have a timeout. Off the fourth personal foul of Alvin Tang, Jericho Dineta gets two bonus shots. And uh, the first goes in to cut the lead down to nine at 67-58. This is uh, becoming a growing dilemma. The Norman Black, Rebus Dignadisa, and Alvin Tang each have four fouls, and that's why they're on the bench. And at the same time, Pure Foods is racking up the numbers in yes. offensive rebounds. However, they have not made too much of a headway here in the third quarter. Well, as because of this guy. Yes, Franz Pumaran has been quarterbacking and scoring for San Miguel Beer. Franz covered by June Tan. And a 25-second buzzer goes off on San Miguel Beer. Beer Foods did not allow the penetration. And on your screens is 18-year-old Malou Talens, our Kodak face of the day. Malou is taking a fine arts in USD where she's a 
in her junior year. And here at the National, she's a San Miguel Beer fan. Malou will be given an 11 by 14 mounted color photo from Kodak. Who has a chance to party at Manila's premier party place. That's at Faces. Yes, but when? And when? Well, when we're not around. around. <laughs> We'll try to move her when she's there. <laughs> there was a foul on that drive-in play. And now both teams are in the penalty with 5-12 to go. De la Cruz. Art de la Cruz is replaced by Otto Agustin, so now Sambo Lin moves over the small forward. Mm -hmm. but, uh, not a very strong rebounding team for San Miguel Beer. But now they're up by only seven. One well, that is inside, rolling one on one against Jerry Cordillera, missing on the left-handed drive. Juntan pushing it up. Here's Cordillera. Up against Graves, Juntan is open. Cordillera, more offensive rebounds for the TJ Half Dog. Fernandez finally says enough. Here comes some boy then. And hearing the roar of the crowd. Back and roll. You were saying, Bill? That can turn anybody on. Oh, yes. And this time Juntan says, no, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> Alam na niya ang mangyayari. Meanwhile, some boys ain't kayo naman. Siya to kayo sensitive. Well, some boys just missed a couple of charities in this game. Now, Patrimonio has gotten a healthy rest in this third quarter and he's back fresh just as Pure Foods' run was beginning to wane a little. Samboy Lim with split charities. He's two out of four from the free throw line. Just got word one for Fernandez uh, with seven assists already in the game. Not to mention his five rebounds. He's done a remarkable job holding San Miguel here together. Far away from Patrimonio will go. And here comes Samboy. And what's going to happen? It must be an awful feeling to know what's going to happen next and feel helpless. Jerry Cotillera loses it to the baseline. Bad break there for Purefoos. He got a good position under the basket, but bobbled it. There's going to be a mismatch somewhere. Yes. Jibahino taking one press for it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, the mismatch. <laughs> As he said, both teams at the party. We have France Pumara coming in for Jun Tan. Ding Panganiban has done a good job of really shuffling yes. his men and giving them ample rest here to keep them fresh. We still have 3 and 43 left in this quarter in the whole fourth quarter. And meanwhile, San Miguel has had to live without uh, Ives Dignadis and Alvin Teng, who each have four fouls. That's Pumara now with 15 in the game. Very quiet 15 yes. points for Franz Pumara. He's been uh, keeping their heads above water, so uh -huh. to speak. That's something you don't see every day. <laughs> Led Capaccio tries a triple V. Capaccio, three points. That's for the evening. That's a good omen for Pure Foods. If they can keep up that pressure on San Miguel Beer, it'll make it much tougher for the beer men. Sky Walker at work. Lani de Mihino just said, let me get out of the way. There you saw when Samboy Lim had taken off, he just mm -hmm. said, uh, I think that's not a good idea. <laughs> Somebody should have said gangway. But Samboy is not doing pretty well. Two out of five so far from the free throw line. In fact, uh, this quarter, I think the only free throw he's made was that bonus off his uh, first basket. Actually, we uh, split one. Uh -huh. So he has two out of five. Uh, three out of six. 
And uh, when we looked at the free throw numbers at the start of the telecast, we saw how big the numbers were for both of these teams, especially for San Miguel Beer. Mm -hmm. Led Tabasha moving against Samboy. Shot clock is down to six. There's going to be a reach in foul on Otto Augustin. He could sense that Paul was going to get the step on him. Penalty. Third person on Augustin. We have a timeout by Jing Panganiba. Timeout, pure food, standard juicy hot dog. Wow, he's at the free throw line. And he uh, brings Pure Foods within nine points of San Miguel Beer. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. is 73-64 in favor of San Miguel Beer. Franz Kumanen, the Samboy men, they clear out for him. And the crowd wants something. A bit too strong. They don't get it that time. with Patrimonio too deep under the basket. Well, he was trying a bit too hard in yeah. that sequence. They had a lot of time on the clock. Oh! Juan Fernandez with a bad pass. Jerry Cotillera scores high. So does Andre Patrimonio. And a loose ball foul is going to be called as a rebound play. Actually, Patrimonio lagged behind to complain about that last call. It uh, turned out well for them because he was able to get that offensive rebound and that's what's been plaguing San Miguel Beer. They haven't been able to keep uh, Pure Foods off the glass. Uh, as we said, Alvin Tang is on the bench. He has four what fouls. Yes. I think uh, this is the first time that Coach Panganiban has really gotten upset this conference. You know, just a few minutes ago, I was about to say that uh, with his new role, uh, Coach Jing Panganiban seems to have mellowed. And, well, as team manager, he certainly was pretty assertive and fiery. Vocal, yes. But, uh, well, this ball game certainly <laughs> is one to be intense about. Well, there's quite a bit at stake. Uh huh. And remember, the semifinals are also a carryover, so every win really counts. Yes, they will be carrying their card to the semifinals. Juan Fernandez is assist to Ato Agustin. Almost. Yes. Now, only one shot is being given to San Miguel Beer at the other end of the floor, while Pupil is nailing them down from the outside. Boy Cabajo with a second triple V in the game, and... The lead is down to five. Hector Kama is in the game for San Miguel. Ato Agustin, his hand off. Results in a jump. Boy Cabal working like a dog on both ends of the court. That is true. You know, Pure Foods has shot uh, quite well from the uh, three-point uh, territory. Four out of six, 67%. And that's what's held San Miguel Beer at bay. Foul on Dindo. Second personal on Pumaran. And don't look now, the lead is only five points for mm -hmm. San Miguel Beer. Here's the second trip to the free throw line for Mon Fernandez. 74 and 68. Six point eight for San Miguel Alvarez is in for Glenn Capasho, while Samboy Lim is given a rest by B-Boy Ravanes. Well, they need more rebounding yeah. and they can't get it from the front line, so B-Boy Ravanes has to try to help there. But Coach Ding Panganiban counters with Kevin Ramas, although that sits uh, Jerry Codinera down. Ramas, of course, can hold his own underneath. That is true. That is gives uh, San Miguel Beer another seven-point lead at 75-68. Only a minute and 20 remaining in the third quarter. Patrimonio given the shot by Jeffrey Graves. Hector Calma up against Dean Dupumaran. Fernandez off to Agustin gets fouled there. Elmer Reyes gave him the room to shoot and suddenly realized he had the ball. Reyes. 
And like I always say, they attack the new player who comes mm -hmm. in. Because he's still trying to feel his way around, right. find out who his defensive man is. Well, what the situation is. Mm -hmm. Hatog is in, missing one of his rare free throws. He's currently six out of seven after that miss. Makes a lateral adjustment and makes the second free throw. That is his first point here in the third quarter. He has a total of 14, waxed hot in the second period. Deboy Ravana is on Boy Kabahog now to try to shut down the outside sniping of uh, Pure Foods because that, has what, uh, that is what has doubled the headaches of San Miguel Beer. They're already uh, undermanned, as it were, at the front line and practically just waiting for the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. they? Only 48 seconds remaining in the third period. I think each team has really gotten what it wanted in this third quarter. Of course, uh, Pure Foods would have wanted to get closer into the ball game, but they're doing a very good job off the offensive glass. That time it was Alvin Patrimonio who got the offensive board and got Ramos to score, and the lead is back down to five. Very high quality game. Man. Oh, yes. As we expected, it certainly is a game that will go down in the books as one of the most exciting and most brilliantly played on both ends of the court. And Second well coached. Yes. Yeah. Otto Bustin will take a technical charity. That was the second infraction by Pure Foods. Seventy-seven, seventy-one, with 25 seconds remaining, so shot clock is off. And uh, San Miguel Beer has all the time to work out this play. Fernandez asking them to open up, to try to get uh, a good one-on-one -on -one move or find somebody cutting under mm -hmm. the basket. You look at Mon Fernandez, you know that he has played point guard before in his high school days. Mm -hmm. with a rather bad pass though. We acknowledge it. So now Pierpoos will have a chance to take the last say in this third quarter. Four seconds to go in the third. Dean Dupomaran making like a bullet. But no go. It's a six-point lead by San Miguel Beer going into the fourth. Going to the last 12 minutes of regulation play in this game between San Miguel Beer and Pure Foods and everybody's having a nice time except the players on the hard court. <laughs> Well, I'm sure they're enjoying themselves, too. Oh, yeah. It's been a great game. But uh, Pure Foods has not really been able to pull a breast. That's because of the vacuum at power forward. Patrimonio has only scored about seven. seven points. Only one field goal up to this point. It's been uh, people like Boy Cabaug and Jerry Codiniera doing the damage. There you see the, that's supposed to spell out Codiniera. Oh, I see. Yes. So that means he has a lot of fans because he has a long name. <laughs> I think uh, the ones wearing ERR and Y are absent. <laughs> <laughs> a boy Cabal just converted on a drive, but now he has a free throw. Uh, the lead has been cut down to four. Well, Cabal has just equaled his average, and we're just starting the fourth quarter. He's filled in three of his three, five free throws. And now the lead of San Miguel Beer is just three points. That's Augustin getting inside. Well, for most of the third quarter, San Miguel was on top by 10 points. Meantime, we have Ives Dignadice coming in from Juan Fernandez, who might be a little tired as he has lapsed into several, or a couple at least, of miscues back in the third. And uh, Dignadice is back to his usual assignment. Alvin Patrimonio. Well, he obviously has done a pretty good job holding down uh, Alvin to only seven points and three rebounds. 
but it has taken its toll. He's picked up four fouls. Yes. Agustin has been hitting 90% of his free throw shots so far. Now 10 of 11. And gives San Miguel a bit of more cushion. The five point lead. The bounce with a nice shuffle there. He caught uh, Biboy Rabanis guessing. Mm -hmm. Big offensive game here for Boy Cabal tonight. Definitely. 21 points already. Now shadowing Biboy Rabanis. Ives Dignadise. Takes it inside against Alvin Patrimonio. Good break for San Miguel Beer. That was a. Uh, would have been a forced Paolo shot for Ives Dignadise. He went up. Didn't know what he was going to do. There was nobody from San Miguel Beer to pass to under the basket. Or a turnover at the very least yes. because he wanted to pass off to somebody, but it was much too tight, the situation. Back in the third quarter, said Miguel, using the fast break to get measure. Samboy Lem. Got it on the second try. Well, Samboy has been working hard for his point, so make no doubt about yes. it. Maybe he could be still be feeling that sprain. Of course, Samba is one of those players who draws a lot of strength from the crowd support. Mm -hmm. They feed off each other. Uh -huh. Good pass by Alvin Tang. Picked up by Hector Calma. Good pass to Alvin. And about 24 pass break for the San Miguel Beer squad. And Beer was just caught uh, not reacting to that play. Codinero is just a step too late. As the lead is back up to seven points for San Miguel. It's 83-76. Boy Cabal relentlessly attacking the hoop. Oh yes, with impunity. Now this is a uh, time that uh, Coach Ding Pangaliban is going to have to make some decisions whether or not he's going to rest Pomar and Codinera and Patrimonio uh -huh. because they're still down and it's just the start of the fourth quarter. So they've got to make some headway soon. Here's a chance. Deep to Pumaran. Again, Purefoot's relentless off the glass. San Miguel Beer can't seem to do anything about it. They were caught looking in, in that particular play. Well, the proper thing is to really box out first before uh -huh. exploding off the floor for the rebound. Especially in transition, you've got to trail. The play is never over just because your man beats you to the basket. Uh, Dito Pumaran is simply five that when he got a defensive rebound earlier. We have a timeout by Norman Block. Timeout, San Miguel Beer. <laughs> Big game in progress here, folks. With 8.55 to go, just a three-point lead by San Miguel Beer. Boy Cabajo, he's been the thorn of the sides of San Miguel Beer. Ato Agustin is down on the floor. Cabajo rubbed him off. Injury timeout, San Miguel Beer. Very well in that play. Alvin has not shot well in this game, and that could be a decisive factor later on. Agustin is holding on to his right thigh. See what happened here. Agustin tried to shadow Boy Cabajo and he got into contact with Alvin Patrimonio's knee, I suppose. And that hurts. It could be a deep bruise mm -hmm. in his thigh. All right, might as well take this opportunity to show you our Pep 24 fast break of the game. Here you see a miss by Patrimonio. Mon Fernandez looking down, finds Samboy Lim. Look at him go. Gangway. And you saw the reaction of the crowd. Yes. And now it is just a one-point lead for San Miguel Beer as Boy Cabajo scored his 25th point in that play. He's done it all tonight. Inside, outside, hustling on the board, uh -huh. and on defense even. And now an opportunity for Pure Foods to get a taste of the lead which they have not had for quite some time here and they know about is hot but Patrimonio finally gets out of that rut 
has only one had only one field goal in ten attempts or nine attempts uh, earlier. At that time, Alvin Tank would only provide a semblance of defense because he didn't want to pick up a fifth foul. Tank underneath. Matrimonio starts the DJ Hot Dogs attack. Off to Dean DePomar and breaks the ball. The pass was late. And Pomarin had to give up the foul to stop the break of San Miguel Beer. Pomarin. Pomarin picking up his, Agustin. let's see, fourth Thank personal foul. And we have a couple of uh, substitutions here. Uh, some more size in the lineup for San Miguel Beer. Graves and Fernandez are in. Here in the fourth quarter, the TJ Hot Dogs have outscored San Miguel 13-6. Another bad pass by Mon Fernandez. He knew it. Pure Foods in the lead by one. Isolation for Codinero. Doesn't take advantage. He goes to the guy who's hot. And another offensive rebound for the DJ Hot Dogs. And a foul. Paul Fernandez. On Mon Fernandez. One thing San Miguel Beer has done quite poorly, especially in this second half of play, was box out. Yes. There you see Codinero just waiting you know you're supposed to always keep an eye on where the closest man is to you and at least keep a body on him close the lanes to him that time as you said Jerry Cordillera just had to pick up the ball it just fell into his lap practically mm -hmm. three of three from the line Jerry Cordillera he also has 14 rebounds so far. So the long uphill climb has been successful to this stage for Pure Foods. Now back in the third quarter, you just got the feeling that Pure Foods was just waiting, lurking uh, in, in ambush. Mm -hmm. And was very patient. And that has certainly reaped them uh, Awards as they have a one point lead at 86 85. 10 assists now for Mon Fernandez. The important thing is for San Miguel Beard to keep coordinated. They're not playing the unit they want to play on the floor. Boy Cabal using his speed again. Oh, then he can do no wrong tonight. As he said, that's a two pronged threat there in one guy. Boy Cabal can hit it both from the inside and the outside. Meanwhile, Fernandez is busy trying to create, but then he Paul has to get some more movement from his teammates. Mm -hmm. San Miguel Beer has only had a basket in the last three or four minutes. Paul Reyes. Elmer Reyes now with five personals, and that is also the 15th foul for the TJ Hot Dog. San Miguel currently has two. Score at 88-85 in favor of Pure Foods. There's a double team and forces Samboylin to give up the ball. Juan Fernandez taking it to Jerry Codillera. Good pass to Jeffrey Graves with Alvin Patrimonio. Picks up his third personal foul. Alvin knew it was going to happen. He was just in the wrong position. Good cut here by Graves. Fernandez saw him and that's what Fernandez has been trying to do. Even if you don't get the shot, at least you can get a couple of free throws. And San Miguel Beer generally does well from the free throw line. Uh, certainly Jeffrey Graves is not the best free throw shooter that San Miguel has. And Elma Ray is patting him on the behind. Uh, well, they know each other. <laughs> well, they go a long way back. Yeah. Graves cuts the lead down to two, 88-86 for Pure Foods. Still a long way to go, under six minutes. Here's Boy Camargo. Now he's got a big man, he's the Nadisa on him. Earlier though, he just breezed by him. Oh, Albert Reyes is one of those rare jumpers from the outside. A 
lot of movement on San Miguel Beer. Oh, that leaves Graves open as Jerry Codillero is looking the other way. Well, Graves has been doing a good job of uh, simulating the movement of Alvin Tang, mm -hmm. who was earlier trying to, uh, finding a lot of openings underneath the basket. Boy, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's smoking. Double team on Sambo. He has to kick it cross court. Good pick by Ives. Now, little by little, all the heavy artillery is starting to come out. Mm -hmm. Ignadice really shadowing Cabajo. Alvarez in the meantime asking for the ball and getting it. Crossover dribble. Out to Dean Zapparata and stepping on the wide line. A triple V explosion there. Fernandez looking up the floor. The bounce to France. Kumaran. Short on the try, but he gets to the visa. Takes it away from Patrimonio. And a loose ball foul is going to be called. The Diesel sort of hurried things up. Yes. In that foul particular Fernandez. play. He was so excited that he got the upper hand against Patrimonio. There was a push off by Fernandez. Yes. You see that here. Fernandez frustrated at the way things turned out and now we have pure foods in the lead by two at 92 to 90. Glenn Capacho is going to come in. Art de la Cruz has now been assigned to Boy Cabal. They're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at Cabal tonight and he's still scoring like crazy. Cabal has 29 in the game. He definitely is not through yet. I don't think he wants this game to end. <laughs> we have a timeout by Ding Pananiban. Time Pure Foods Standard Juicy Hot Dog. Has been at the forefront of the Pure Foods offense. And you see his number is 29 points now 30. And the TJ Hot Dogs have a three point lead. Four. Both games tonight have really been fabulous oh, yes. games, Ed. In the first game, we had Shell winning in overtime over Alaska, 98-93. Boy, Cabal is 5 of 7 from the free throw line tonight. Well, with under four minutes to play, it looks like uh, Coach Dick Panganiban might just stick it out with this lineup he's got on the floor. Second chance point. That's where the TJ Hot Dogs have really done a number on San Miguel here. Stop by there with a reverse. But with those offensive rebounds that TJ Hot Dogs have been pulling down, they were bound to get uh, so many second chance points. Boy Cabal working like the devil to get free patrimonio. Meanwhile, a triple team. And it's probably going to be France Pumara and called foul is third. And that is the fifth team foul on San Miguel Beer. TJ Hot Dogs have six so far. Three minutes and 25 seconds left in this game. San Miguel Beer has done a good job of containing patrimony in this ballgame. As you can see, he's just breaking up into double figures now. You know, he averages 27 points a game. So they've done their homework there. But the thing is, Boy Cabal is just you know, pitching everything into the hoop and it all falls. And he's uh, really still able to run around screens yeah. and get open shots. Well, that shows you what kind of physical conditioning oh, yes. that he's been getting. Now shadowing a call to Finn. The Gadisian's inside. Tags out to beat the ball. Juan Fernandez is given a pick by Samboy Nim. Down to four seconds on the shot clock. Offline of the shot was Ivesti Gadisa. Now the five of the Beermen might be getting a bit tired. There you see that last play. They were just watching things happen. Sure. Everybody would come and meet the ball, but uh, there wasn't any movement. There wasn't any screening. No cuts inside. Meantime, Ato Augustin caught trying to hold down Augustine. Alvin Patrimonio. That is the fourth person on, on Augustin. Now both Pure Foods and San Miguel have four team, or rather six team fouls apiece. Well, Patrimonio set a good screen there for Cabajo, and you know, Agustin just wanted to knock him down or get him out of the way. 
Augustine is on Camacho. Glenn Capasha has it against Chamboy. Beerfors has shown a lot of patience in the second half. Juan Fernandez in desperation tried to give the hug to Jerry Cordillera that play. Well, he knew Jerry was setting up well, even the, without the ball here. The thing was, Codinero was already close enough to be dangerous. Yes. And there was no double team. And as we were saying, Codinero is you know, an unusual matchup for San Miguel Beer. Well, that was only the third personal foul of Mon Fernandez. So he figured, well, let him work at the free throw line. But now, San Miguel Beer is in penalty. Right? Yes. And we have a timeout by Norman Black. Timeout, Only two minutes and 29 seconds left in this ball game, and it's a five-point lead by Pure Foods. This is an important possession for San Miguel Beer because if they don't score here and Pure Foods does at the other end, it's quite a big hole to be making up in the last two minutes. Not that they're they aren't capable, it's just that mm -hmm. Pure Foods has played quite well tonight. Uh, both teams are now in the penalty. Tom Boy Lim inside, double teamed, and Boy Kabahu gives up his first personal foul. It's going to be an important development, both teams being in the penalty. Remember, San Miguel Beer got the better of the exchange from the free throw line the first time around. But Tom Boy has been having some problems there. And are the fans into this game or what? <laughs> huh? Ninety-seven, ninety-three, four-point lead for Pure Foods with two minutes and ten to go. That's going to be a pushing foul on Franz Pomare. Just a slight tap from mm -hmm. behind. Fourth personal on Franz Pomare, and as Bill Velasco pointed out earlier, San Miguel is already in the penalty. Of course, at that last play, TJ Hot Dogs also picked up their seventh team foul. This is where the game is going to slow down. Yes. And the uh, things like concentration and uh, execution are mm -hmm. affected. Because you know me, you just sometimes you want to run, you want to get a good play off right away, and things are stalled by free throws. And this is another test of uh, good concentration on the part of the players. Well, that can really throw you off. Two times, Dita Pomarin gives him a six-point lead. Juan Fernandez up against Jerry Codinera. Number five on Jerry Codinera. Dire development for Pure Foods. Earlier, it was the foul trouble on uh, Ives Dignadis and Alvin Tang, which really hurt San Miguel Beer, uh, limiting the substitution patterns and allowing Beerfoods to get a big lead off the offensive glass. And that's what uh, helped Beerfoods overtake the Beermen. But that is now with 11 points in the game. And we're the last two minutes of this ball game brought to you by Emperador Brandy. Dito na tayo sa Emperador Brandy. It is a five-point lead for Pure Foods. And still, Pure Foods is being very mature, being very patient, taking their time, perhaps too much time. The shot clock is winding down. And Tabajo puts it up. And two referees calling opposite, in opposite directions. And referee Ernie De Leon reverses himself, agrees with referee Chua. He gives it to the TJ Hot Dogs. Glenn Capasha has it a minute and 28 remaining. It is a five-point lead by Pure Foods. Patrimonio posting up. He's double-teamed. Boy, Capasha is open! This is Boy Capasha's game. And a timeout by Norman Block. Timeout, San Miguel is an eight-point lead for Pure Foods at Augustine. Missing on the drive. Fran Fumarin 
Off to Fernandez for a triple V, nothing there. Well, that uh, last three-point shot of Boy Cabal oh, where yeah. he really Cabal. swung the ball around to the weak side very quickly. Could have been a backbreaker there. Juan Fernandez trying a three-point shot and missing. On the rebound play, a foul is called, and Sambo and him is at the line. Well, it's still possible considering that both teams are in the penalty. But a lot of things have to happen. San Miguel Beer has to uh, either force some turnovers here or uh, get Pure Foods to miss some free throws. Meantime, a timeout is called by the Hot Dogs. With a minute and five to go, we'd like to show you that big three-point shot by Boy Cabal because Alvin Patrimonio was double teamed. Yes, they had to. He had to kick it back out, and because of the double team, they swung it around to the weak side, and Boy Cabajo, guess who, was open. <laughs> All right, it's 102 to 96, a six-point lead by the TJ Hot Dogs. Not insurmountable. No, not under these circumstances. As I said earlier, both teams are in the penalty, and San Miguel Beer must do either of two things, force some turnovers, mm -hmm. or uh, put the uh, Hot Dogs at the line and make them miss. Well, the hot dogs will be inbounding from the back court. That will uh, allow more room mm -hmm. to inbound the ball and at the same time allow them to use up more of the clock. Yes. As Franz Kumaran hits the deck, referee June Cortez calls a foul on him, his fifth. As you said, that will put uh, the TJ hot dogs on the line. And the problem is, who do you foul? Well, at that time it was Glenn Capasho. Got a pretty decent average, I believe, from the uh, free throw line. Actually, most of the TJ hot dogs shoot very well from the free throw line. An 86% shooter misses on the first free throw. So this ploy, somewhat successful for San Miguel Beer. And now time is also against the Beermen in that they can't use up too much time in scoring. So Agustin hurries it up, up court from top of the key. A three-point shot won't go. And it's out of bounds for Pure Foods. Vasco Marin just couldn't uh, reach the ball in time. And France will foul out. And that will send Dindo to the free throw line. And a lot of the fans have made up their minds about this ball game, but remember, but uh, Dindo has to make these free throws. Well, going into this ball game, he shot 14 of 16, or is it 16 of 17? Yes, 94 percent. So, like I was saying, who do you follow on the pure food side? Mm -hmm. Lead is now eight points. 54 seconds left. This could be the insurance. Yes. The San Miguel Beer will obviously need three possessions at least. Mm -hmm. And with only 54 seconds remaining, is Hector Kama giving it to Samboy Lim. They let him, let him go. Only took uh, five seconds off the clock there. But they wanted to wait for the foul. Foul Dignadice. Fifth personal on Ives Dignadice. Well, Patrimonio is a 92% free throw shooter. Who else is there? <laughs> well, they haven't tried Codinier and Cabao. Mm -hmm. Maybe not Cabao. I don't know. He's really scorched tonight. But Jerry Codinier hasn't done too badly from the free throw line That's tonight. The average is 84%. So it was a great game. But uh, I think the foul trouble to Dignadice and Tang told on San Miguel Beer. And then uh, it affected their rotation. And they weren't as effective in keeping Pure Foods off the offensive grass. Ding Pangadiban paced his players very well tonight. But in an odd combination of uh, Jun Tan, Nani de Mejillo, and Joey Santa Maria, which uh, not just uh, held, fort, but, uh, held the fort, but actually made up some uh, ground between mm -hmm. them and San Miguel Beer and they just sort of 
waited to pounce on the beer men. Uh, certainly everybody contributed uh, to the beer food cause tonight. Of course, he did mention uh, at the top of the coverage the fatigue factor that can also work for either or against either team. And it seems that the uh, San Miguel players were uh, the more worn out after uh, all is said and done in this ball game. And let's not forget the fantastic game played by Boy Cabajo. Yes. At the start of this quarter, he had at the start of this quarter he had already matched his average. And how many points does he have already? Cabajo gets 34 in the game. And 18 of those in this fourth quarter. Yes. And so, Beer Foods clinches the first uh, semifinals berth, Ed. And they take solo leadership in the tournament so far with six wins and two losses. San Miguel goes down to five and three. And so, Swift is uh, all by its lonesome at second. Right. Cowboy <laughs> hits a three-point shot. Hey, we still have 27 seconds to go. And Hector Kalma stops the clock at 26. However, Dean de Pumaran has not missed a free throw as yet in this ball game. So, to the Beermen, this game isn't over. They're yes. saying, hey, the final horn hasn't sounded. We're just down by five. They missed a couple of free throws. We get a basket in, what, five, eight seconds. There's still plenty of time. Mm -hmm. And they're praying that the fat lady has a sore throat. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you don't have one after that overtime oh, game. Oh, yes. Our first game ended with Shell eking out a five-point win over Alaska, 98-93 in overtime. And Norman Black has a time out. Uh, 26 seconds to go and a seven-point deficit staring San Miguel Beer in the face. But as my partner Bill has pointed out, uh, the Beermen have not lost hope in this game. As I said, but you know, time has really made it a foregone conclusion unless they make a couple of quick three-pointers here. The Pure Foods Hot Dogs are knocking down free throws with relative ease. Mm -hmm. Unless something dramatic happens in the next few seconds, as in immediately, this game goes to Pure Foods. Otto Agustin tries to get by Dean de Pumar, and he gets a three-point play. And the lead is down to five. And more importantly, to Dean de Pumar in shock, he's out of this game. Yes. Following his brother on the other side, 